Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu. Allah sent his messages into this world through prophets. The prophets were sent, and they are known as Rasuls, 124,000 of them came. They came to all parts of the world. And the last Rasul to come was Muhammad. So the teachings that we are taught now in religion came from these various prophets or Rasuls uh, many, many years ago. And these teachings constitute what are known as our religions. And the prophets came to display for us, to explain to us, to interpret for us, to show us, and to answer the great questions, such as what is the relationship between man and God? What is the relationship between man and the Rasuls, the prophet? How does one reach God? What is God like? What does God sound like? What are his qualities? God is a resonance that has existed forever, still exists. The messengers, the prophets, the Rasuls, have come into this world and gone back. But they have not disappeared. They are with us at all times. How do we become connected to them? How do we become in touch with them? Well, if you look in the sky, sometimes you see lightning. And when you see lightning, you know that there's going to be an event soon. Something's going to happen. It's going to rain. And from that event, other things are going to happen. Plants are going to receive water, and crops are going to grow. Animals are going to be sustained in their need for water. Rivers are going to be replenished. And there's going to be an ongoing sustenance. And it all began with that lightning. When we speak to God, God sends forth a resonance. And if we are sensitive enough, we can catch this resonance. And that resonance comes through the messengers of God who are constantly at work. They did not disappear like lightning. They appear and they give off wisdom. The song of divinity comes and is conveyed through them to us. And in this conveyance, we are given knowledge, we are given understanding, and we are given wisdom. When you've attained the certitude of God, this becomes available to you. And the divine resonance will come 
from within you. As you see lightning comes from all directions, this resonance will also come from all directions within you. In order to be able to become sensitive enough to understand this resonance, in order to become attuned to this resonance, you need a sheikh or a guru who has experience with understanding this. And what he will do is he will explain to you the nature of God. He will explain to you the qualities of God. And one of the miracles of a true sheikh is he will separate the divinity within you from the gross world that also occupies your being. So these messages that come will come to you because the divinity within you has now become palpable. It's become at the forefront of your consciousness. It's become real within you. And when it becomes real within you, it becomes real within reality. It touches reality and vibrates that resonance of truth within you. And what the sheikh does is in his presence, divinity is drawn out of you. The divinity that is within you comes alive because it is alive in him. It comes alive because it resonates with the divinity in him. It recognizes the divinity in him. It's a mirror for yourself to see the truth in yourself. Now, it's difficult to find a sheikh like this because to be a true sheikh, he has to be without the qualities of arrogance. He has to be without the I. He has to be without desire. He has to be without mind. His purpose is on behalf of others. What he does is on behalf of others. He works on behalf of others as one of God's representatives on earth to give to humanity divinity. In other words, to make divinity available to man by sorting out everything within you so that the divinity is seen, pushing aside all that isn't divine, making you conscious of what is divine and pushing away all that isn't, giving you a thirst for that which is divine, and overriding your thirst for the world, showing you that the thirst for the divine is the great thirst within your being, and is the only thirst within your being that can actually be satisfied. All of the other thirsts will never be satisfied. All of the other thirsts are a constant chase for more and more and more because they do not have satisfaction within them. That which is divine has satisfaction within it. It has fulfillment within it. It has grace within it. And when that grace becomes cognizant to your being, it makes the wisdom within you grow, and you grow in divinity, and you grow closer and closer to truth. And then you begin to understand that there is an intermingling going on. There's an intermingling between you and the sheikh. There's an intermingling between God's contentment and your contentment. 
There's an intermingling between God's wisdom and your wisdom. There's an intermingling between the truth of the prophets and your truth. All of these are intermingled within your being. And when you become cognizant of them, your wisdom grows and grows and grows. As this happens, generosity grows within you. Compassion grows within you. Mercy grows within you. Contentment grows within you. And within that contentment, you touch Allah's contentment. Within that mercy, you touch Allah's mercy. And there is this constant growth through that connection and through the ongoing work that the sheikh does to bring forth these qualities from within you. The sheikh is the exemplar of what man can be. So the sheikh is not only there to bring out these qualities within you, he is there to show you what to become. You ask, what is the sun? If you look at the sun, the only way to know what the sun is, is to become the sun. You ask, what is the sheikh? The only way to know what is the sheikh is to become the sheikh. And the sheikh has this unique ability given to him by Allah to give unto others that what he has. And he gives it freely without holding back. He gives it because it is Allah's will that it be given and Allah's will that it be received throughout the world. You know, there are many false sheikhs in the world. And so one must be very, very careful about who one gives his allegiance to. It's like having tigers be the shepherds for goats. The goats disappear and the tigers get fat. And part of the problem in the world right now is these tiger cubs have become the sheikhs and the rulers of the world. And many of them are getting fat and the world is in a state of difficulty and disrepair because of who the rulers are. We need benign rulers. We need holy rulers. We need rulers who are here to give, not to take. And this is a very rare instance. They say, if you put make a sheikh into a monkey, I'm sorry, if you make a monkey into a sheikh and you put the monkey in front of 2,000 people, soon you will have 2,000 monkeys. So we have to be very careful who we follow and who we give allegiance to. And it should be understood that the sheikh is and is not here simultaneously. The sheikh is a manifestation of God's qualities. So Allah, to make it easier for man, because God is formless, man isn't formless, has put within a certain form his qualities so that we could understand them better and see them better. So the sheikh is in form, yet in truth, He's not in form. The sheikh can be looked at and seen, but in truth, you can't see what he really is, just as you can't see your own soul. Just as his presence is what allows you to understand and come to see 
your own soul. Come to recognize your own soul. We need to be able to concentrate and analyze and come to conclusions about these things. So first, one has to find a sheikh, because without that kind of guidance, it's very, very difficult to find truth. But after that is found, after that sheikh is found, what do we do? We have to surrender. And we need a sheikh who is already surrendered. We need a sheikh who is surrendered to Allah so that in our surrendering to the sheikh, we're not surrendering to form, we're surrendering directly to God. And in that surrender, we are taken towards that eventual merging with that which is the truth. So this relationship is very important and very critical. And it's at the heart of understanding Sufism that we are taken. But in order to be taken, we have to allow ourselves to be taken. In order to be taken, we have to give ourselves up to be taken. When uh, God came to Abraham uh, and gave him instructions to sacrifice his son, he came to his son and told him, and his son said to him, where do you want the sacrifice done? I am ready to lay down and be sacrificed. This kind of devotion to truth, this kind of acceptance of truth is something that we have to understand. We have to analyze and we have to become cognizant of and we have to put ourselves in that position when truth comes can we surrender to it or will we fight it when truth comes will we be able to ride that truth or avoid it because of the fact that our mind, which takes on a million different shapes and has a billion different ideas, tries to keep us within the confines of this world. So we have this struggle that we're going to go through. Our mind is going to put itself between us and Allah. Our mind is going to put itself between us and the guru. Our desires are going to put themselves between us and Allah. Our desires are going to put themselves between us and the sheikh. Our mind and desire for and of the world are going to try and separate us from the truth. Our mind and desire are going to try to control us. They want to be the God in our life. They want to be the master in our life. And we have to be wise enough to understand the nature of the mind and to understand the nature of its interference between ourselves and God. And this is part of what's called jihad. This is part of the great struggle to overcome the world and give ourselves over to reality. We say things are real, but in fact, they are illusory. There is but one thing that is real, and that is Allah. 
And one of Allah's names is Haq, which means reality. So we have to transfer our being from this illusory nature in this illusory world with these illusory ideals and with these illusory desires into something that is no longer illusory but is permanent and is everlasting and is immortal and the sheikh is that which allows that transfer to occur by giving your heart to him and allowing him to take his heart in your heart into his heart you travel that path towards truth you become a passenger in reality you become a passenger in the path of reality we say in the prayer allah take us on the straight path and that's what the sheikh does he opens up the straight path for us he shows us the nature of the straight path and he shows us the way of that path towards allah if you have a bull and you take him to the field every day on a wagon and then you take whatever is in the field and you bring him back home on the wagon after a while the bull even if you fall asleep will go to the place where he's been taken the last few times so if you fall asleep on the way home he'll get you home or if you fall asleep on the way to the field he'll get you to the field but if someone comes and alters his path he'll go on the other path or if someone turns him around he'll go back he doesn't have the ability to analyze and to come to determinations as to where he wants to go our mind is constantly going to try and turn us as we travel and turn us away from our destination turn us away from home but if we have the sheikh the sheikh is there as a constant reminder and insisting that we go in certain directions but not insisting with a whip insisting through kindness and through love and this kindness and love is so overwhelming and so sweet and so delicious to the taste and to the nostrils that there doesn't seem to be any other choice how can we choose something else because nothing is as delicious as this nothing is as fine as this so the prophets are all still working they are still sending the messages they are no longer in form but the messages keep coming they are no longer in form but the truth keeps coming and the truth is available to us and it is through the medium of the sheikh that this truth is awoken within us he takes and shows us the qualities that block the truth he takes and shows us that which we do that hinders the truth from entering in our being he shows us the pitfalls of arrogance the pitfalls of hatred the pitfalls of separation the pitfalls of differences the pitfalls of race the pitfalls of religion the pitfalls of color and he shows us how each of these separations separates us from god each one of these separations separates us from the truth 
each one of these separations is like a log across the straight path. It stops your progress. And man, in his ignorance, believes these separations make him bigger, make him more important. I'm different than you are, and therefore more important than you are. The sheikh brings you back to appropriate thinking, which is we are all one and God is one and there are no differences among men. We are all the children of one mother and father. We are all brothers and sisters and all of these apparent differences and apparent separations are lies brought to us by Satan to separate Allah's family, to separate mankind from each other, to bring mankind into disrepute, to bring mankind to a state of difficulty, a state of war, a state of anger, a state of separation. And it happens constantly. It's amazing that it happens within religions, but it does. Religions separate themselves from each other, claim superiority, and then fight over who is superior. They all tell you there is one God, but somehow God seems to favor them more than everyone else, or they understand God better than anyone else is capable of understanding. All of the 124,000 messengers came with the same message. They came with the message of the unity of existence. They came with the message of one God. They came with the message of love and kindness towards each and every being. They came with the intention of spreading the word that man needs to take on the qualities of God and practice those qualities in their actions. So these words like mercy and compassion and love, they're nouns, but they have to become verbs. They have to become action words. They have to become actions in our lives. So we must set an intention every day that we are going to practice God's qualities in our life. And the people closest to us are the people we can begin this work with. So this practice of God's quality begins in the home. A simple uh, thing I tell uh, young couples who are getting married, I tell them, don't call each other by your names. Call each other honey or darling or something very, very sweet and endearing. It helps to bring up the level of kindness within the situation. Most of us can understand that. And most of us can feel the warmth when our parents would call us darling or sweetheart. We need to bring that same kind of love into the world. Babies are often used as an example of how easy it is to love. Whenever one sees a baby and holds a baby, one feels kindness and one feels love. Why does that feeling change as they grow up? Why does it become more difficult to love adults than to love babies? Well, some of the answers are pretty obvious. Babies don't talk back. 
<laughs> and so it's much easier to continue to love them. But there is one of the hurdles. Can you take the abuse of the world and continue to love? Can you take the difficulties of the world and continue to love? The Sheikh was always an example of how he would take in whatever was given, and his reaction was always the same. His reaction was always love. He would not stoop to responding to anger with anger. He would not stoop to responding to hatred with hatred. He would always respond to each of these emotions with love. And this is one of the hurdles that each of us has to be able to overcome. When things become difficult, can we continue to love? The story of Job in the Bible is a grand epic of that understanding. Job was one of the richest men in the world and lost everything within a matter of moments. Yet, his devotion towards God did not cease, and his love for man did not cease. When Bawa tells uh, the story of Job, he talks about these large parasites that were on his skin and eating of his flesh. And when they would fall off, he would pick them up and put them back on his skin. This is the kind of love and overwhelming love that Job had for all of humanity. We need to develop a love for all of humanity. We have to understand that we are within a limited time frame. We are within a limited space. We are within a limited journey. This manifestation that we are all in has an end. There are lines around our neck which indicate that the end time is going to come. There's going to be a strangulation. My sheikh used to say he wore beads around his neck, not in order to count the names of God, but to remind him that the strangulation was coming. Well, it's going to come. And we're going to be judged on our reactions before it came. So we have to be able to set forth an intention that our kindness and our love and our compassion and our mercy will override all of the other emotions. Our adherence to God's qualities will override everything else in our existence. Our adherence to truth will become the most important things to our being. Our adherence to reality and to understanding reality will be of the utmost importance to us. Our integrity will become incredibly important to us. Our need to defend ourselves will be secondary to our need to be compassionate. These kinds of understandings have to overwhelm us. These kinds of understandings have to become who we are. And by doing that, we open ourselves up to receiving the resonance of God through his messengers, through his ketubs, through the angels, and we will receive the messages of truth within this lifetime. We must make the concerted effort to make our faith in Allah stronger than our faith in the world, to make our faith in God the most believed in thing that we have, 
and we have to fight the constant <clears throat> interference of the mind, which tells you to turn and take what's available in the pleasures of the world. We must understand that these pleasures cannot compare to the pleasures of really, truly understanding God's qualities and becoming at one with them. Allah, in his mercy, created us and in his mercy allows us to share in his qualities. Imagine the kindness and the generosity of our Lord, who is mercy and says, my creation, you may feel mercy. My creation, you may feel compassion. My creation, you may feel and understand love. May it come to be that all of us get to know these qualities, that all of us imbibe these qualities, bring them into our being, and become these qualities so that we truly become at one with that one that created each and every one of us. Amin, amin. Ya Rabbi Lalamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.